verse 2 and 3. God, Bible tells us that when God created the heavens and the earth, there was a darkness for everything to continue and for life to be in progress and for things to function according to the will of God, God needs to declare light. God said, let there be light. And it's not the light that God later created after that. We know that after God said, let there be light, later God now created light, like a sunlight and moonlight. Sun, God creates sun, sun, sunlight and moonlight. Also, God creates stars. So, but in the, um, in the beginning of it, God said, let there be light. And there was light. In that process, God began to create a lot of things. God made life so beautiful. So, today we'll be looking at dwelling in His perfect light. Dwell in his perfect light. In this passage where we read today, particularly verse 22, the Bible says, He revealed the deep and secret things. He know what is in darkness and light dwell with him. The God that we serve or the God that called us together to serve him dwell in light. There is no doubt about that. And in as much God dwell in light, He wants us to become indweller of the same light. God don't want us to remain somewhere else from where He is. He wants us to be in the same place where He is. That is the message we have been preaching all these days. And my prayer is that the Holy Spirit we give out understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In this passage, what brought this revelation or this testimony is about a king who dreamed. After he might have dreamed, and what in the amazing this chapter is that he forgot all about the dream. You know, when you dream a dream, you go to someone to interpret it for you, you will tell the person, and the person will now use the wisdom of God or designing spirit to just explain this is your dream. But on this man issue, he forgot everything. But what you dream, someone now came and revealed everything, exactly how you dream that dream. You know, it's very, very complicated. So this is exactly what happened. In this Bible passage, this Man Nebuchadnezzar, the king Nebuchadnezzar, his dream almost cost the life of so many people. He want to kill a lot of his wise men just because they cannot come up with solution. Like I told us uh, on Sunday about a wise generation, that wise generation they always look for way to find solution to every problem. No problem is above wise people. They will find way out. You see what Daniel did? Something that could have cost so many people's lives. He went to God secretly while others are feasting. Sometimes the white people, the way they behave, is beyond human comprehension. Praise the Lord. Amen. This man went to God that dwell in light, who can reveal everything that are hidden in darkness. And God showed him everything about the king dream and he came forth and said let me tell you what i want to tell you is that all what you have saw in the, in the dark time in the night time the one who is in the light saw everything so let me tell you how everything go and he came up with a wonderful solution that was able to guarantee peace of the whole nation the peace of individual the peace of everybody. It is very good to know where we should be or where you want to be. Sometimes we just want to compare ourselves with somebody else. Sometimes we don't have our personal decision. Some of, some of us don't have our own personal will. We don't even know who we are. We don't know ourselves. In most times, some people need to, they need to push us or press us or constrain us 
to follow a particular way. Most of the time, it might be against our way, but we still follow because we don't have our own idea. Praise the Lord. But a man like Daniel, who seek for God's opinion over issues that beyond human comprehension, was able to know that God dwell in the midst of light. God what He dwell in the midst of light. And the God wants us also to dwell in the midst of light. If you dwell in the midst of light, I want to tell you the truth. Every day you'll be celebrating. You will always feel happy. Even if there might be a problem, you will see it as a problem because light will continually give you some detailed assurance about the future. You have hope. It's not about what people say. It's about where you live. It's about where God has planted you. Bible said that Daniel give glory to God. He thank God. He said there is a God that lives forever. And it's a God that gives wisdom to those who lack wisdom. He gave understanding to those who desire for it. He also gave knowledge to as many that seek for knowledge. And the most wonderful thing is that light dwell with him. Darkness has no power or ability to influence him. You see, one of the reasons why you should aspire a, a place called light domain is because you will live in a peaceful life and peaceful condition. Those who stay in the darkness, who really know what darkness means, they will explain to you. Praise the Lord. I used to say something. This place where we are now, if we switch off the light here, we will not know the exit here again. My trying to go to this direction, you end up colliding with the wall. Just because it's not availability of light. So having light with you will give you ability to see the direction where you are going. You will have ability to see everything going around your life and others. This is exactly what happened to Mandane. He was able to see what is going around the king, not only the present and even the future. This present age that we are living, Daniel foresaw it. It was in the dream of Nebuchadnezzar. If you read the whole chapter very well, that is where you should aspire to be in light, to dwell where there is light. Forget about what people are doing secretly. Just have it as your own decision that in your life you want to dwell in the midst of light. When you look at your Bible in the book of Psalm 27, you read verse 4. A man, David, said, One thing have I desire that I will seek after all the days of my life to dwell in his tabernacle and to inquire in his temple. He said, I know in the time of trouble, it will hide me in his secret pavilion. Those who dwell in where God is, is those who have total guarantee of security. If you remain where God is, nobody can touch you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. One man of God told us a story about three fish. He said these three fish, they have problem. And they now went to God that there is a shark in the water inside the river that always trying to hunt them. And they have been trying to see that one day they will end up as a dinner to the shark. And they went to God. God, help us. We need a solution. And God said, okay. 
Number one, what do you want me to do for you? Ah. One of them say, what I need, give me eyes all over my body that I could see everywhere, every direction. I say, okay, just give it to you, no problem. Another one say, God, what I want, give me feather. I think the shark cannot fly. When he come with his trouble, I will fly out of the water. <laughs> we say no problem. Then, in the meantime, the shark came. He saw the one with the full of eyes. That eyes really attracted the shark. He said, wow, look at how this face is so beautiful. Ah, this will be very good. I've never tasted fish that contain eyes all over the body since I was in this water and started running after the, you know, inside the, after the, the, the fish. And the fish began to run. As it began to swim, it got a place. There is a particular, a pool, not too far. And the, the fish try the effort and jump out of it and land inside that pool. And it was there for a while. And some rise to a high temperature and the place begin to dry. But the water started abated. Until the time came, the water dried off and it died inside the place. Then the one that asked for the feather, as if the, 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 the shark was coming, it just <laughs> Try to fly out <laughs> as he was flying in the air. He goes so and say, Ah, what a wonderful fish with feather. And the eagle just go and hunt the, the fish. What was the third one request? He One thing I just want, anywhere I go, continue to go with me. And then the two they already end their race. Remain in the last one. And this child did never rest, keep on looking for the last one. As he was going, he got to a place. They will not be able to move near the, the fish. And all the, all the children of the, the big fish, the shark tears. Now let's attack this one and kill this one. What is the problem? And I said, don't try it. So what is happening? Can't you see? Are you blind? When you go to the book of First, uh, Second King chapter six, there is a very unique story there. It's about Elijah. Elijah dwell in the light. When you read from verse twelve down, you will discover that there was a time King of Syria ordered a decree: go and fetch me Elijah. Just because Elisha is the backbone of the king of Israel. I'll set my trap for my enemy and I could not get him. Go and get the mom washing for this man. His watchman. Go and get him for me. If you can get him for him, me, I will get the king easily. You know, sometimes many of us don't know what the devil is doing. The devil knows you have a wall of defense. Before you can get in and try you, you must first of all break the wall. The wall might be someone who stands in the gap for you. And that is Elijah, Elijah in his own time. He's a man who stood in a gap for the king of Israel. And the Syria king said, okay, go and arrest that man. And then the servant of Elijah woke up in the morning and he saw the army surrounded them. He said, Master, what are we still waiting for? Death is already near. Alas, we die, we already gone. The man of God said, Mister, don't worry yourself. He said, those who are with us, they are more than they are with them. He said, Lord, open his eyes to see. You see, the man who dwells in the light can see what is around him. Many of us, we can't see divine security. That is why we are afraid here and there. Praise the Lord. I used to say it boldly since they talk about pandemic. Everywhere. I'm not boasting from, of myself. I'm boasting in the Lord. 
so much confidence because I know where I am living in the realm of the Spirit. Praise the Lord. We are living in a place where enemy cannot touch because they are not qualified to be there. Praise the Lord. Our enemy are not permitted to be where we are living. Because it's not a place they can enter. Psalm 24, he said it. He said, who shall I send to the hill of the Lord? Who can stand in his holy place? So where is the holy enemy cannot go near the place? They will be scared. So when you are living in a realm that is beyond this ordinary, your enemy is afraid of you. They will not come near you. Before I, I have proper knowledge about myself, one day, long time ago, a woman where I was living then, he always abused everybody. He can tackle anybody. But one day somebody asked the woman, what about this guy? What are you, do you know about him? He said, that one is a son of the spirit. He said, no, but don't dare that man. As he was very small then. Praise the Lord. Amen. But now I begin to understand everything. Everything now is clear to me. You see, where God keep you, enemy cannot go there. When the fish now see that the one protecting the last fish is greater than them, they give up. You see, devil cannot do anything with you. When you know you are living in the right place. Devil will attack you when you are living in the wrong place. When you change your location. When you begin to dwell in the lower part. Devil will come after you. But when you are living in a higher place, according to Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 to 2, he said, if you have been risen with Christ, he said you should set your affections where Christ is. You should begin to look at the things above, not things beneath. Do you know the death you are afraid of is under your feet? Anyone who die go down. Their body go down. Their body don't go up. So devil has a limit about you. So when you live in a perfect light, that perfect light is our God. You will not be afraid of anything. Yesterday, we did a test in my working place. After they control everything, asking me Stephen different question. The doctor asked this one. The doctor used mask. He said, "Ah, oh, you already took vaccine, no? Cover your nose, cover your nose, because you can be affected." I said, "What? Is, what will I be affected?" God has already said in the book of Exodus fifteen twenty six. He said, "If you hacking diligently." The commandment I commanded you this day. He said that none of the disease I put upon Egyptian, I will put upon you. I am the Lord and he let it. And the man said, are you interested in taking vaccine? I said, no, he crossed it. I'm okay. But, said, but you can see me, I'm very heady. He said, yes, of course, I see. Everything is perfect. Praise the Lord. Because when you dwell in the light, they will take care of your health issue. You don't need to have health problem. The great physician will continually visit you, taking care of you. In the book of Jeremiah 8.22, God was so amazed. He has people, he has leader that could have taken his own people into the light of God where they can enjoy some health. And instead, people are hot with different kind of sickness and disease. And God began to ask a question. Is there no bad in Gilead? Is there no physician? Why the wound of my daughter not healed? Why did they live in a perpetual pain every day? 
Why did they live in incurable wound and pain every day? The people who are supposed to be jubilating, roaring for joy every day, but enemy make them unrest because of trouble. Their soul is disquieted within them. They find no rest for their soul because enemy is troubling their realm. When you dwell in the perfect light, we have peace of mind. You will have courage about this present time and your future will be guaranteed. Praise the Lord. There are characteristics of this perfect light that I will just mention a few of it. Praise the Lord. The characteristic of perfect light is it stands pure, undiluted. Praise the Lord. When you go to the book of 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, it tells us about this light. He explains how this light is so glorious, so wonderful, so extraordinary. It is beyond what you can use your mouth to explain. Praise the Lord. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5 says, This then is the message which we have heard of him. And declare unto you that God is light, in him is no darkness at all. So beyond undiluted. You can't find any single trace of darkness there. Because the whole place is filled with glory of light. The other thing is that it exposes every hidden things. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 13. Book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 13. What did he say? Praise the Lord. But all things that are reproved. Everything that I reproof are made manifest. Are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever does make manifest is light. Light will expose every secret things. All the secret of your enemy, the agenda of the wicked one, light will expose it to you. The enemy you are afraid of, they are also afraid of you. Praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> you see, you need to have good understanding about what you are doing. Knowledge is power. Daniel proved it that knowledge is power. When some people are going about looking for sham, consulting demon to, to, to give them direction about the king of king Nebuchadnezzar, what Daniel did, he went to his closet and seek for God that dwell in the light that darkness can never find with him. And God showed him the right thing, correct information. And when he told the king, he did not dispute with the information. He said, yes, that is exactly what I dreamt of. What you just revealed is exactly. And he still explained the king to king, his own portion in that dream. Even our present day is in the dream. Praise the Lord. So the perfect light will give you direction at all times. The another thing about this light is that it outshines darkness. It doesn't matter how darkness looks like. In the book of John chapter 1 verse 5, John 1 verse 5 says, And the light shineth, and darkness comprehend it not. And the light shineth, and darkness what? Comprehend it not. So when you do where, where there is a perfect light, there is no way darkness can come and overpower you. When we go to Isaiah chapter 60, verse 3. Isaiah 60. Is he revealed to us about this perfect light that gave us hope and assurance of future? Praise the Lord. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 2 and 3. He said, For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. 
But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to, the, to thy light, and the king to the brightness of thy rising. So it's an attractive light that call upon different people. It attracts. Because it shines beyond human comprehension. The, the, the way the thing illuminates is beyond what you can use your mouth to explain. That is what should we should be desiring every day. Most of us, we are missing a lot. Let me tell you, if you're a pastor, you're a man of God, you're a prophet, you are this and that, all your desire is to one day you buy a private jet, and at the end of the day, after you buy a private jet, and then you are, you are moved out of the light into your private jet. Mm -hmm. So what will you gain later? So many people have relocated many years ago. But they will still think they are still where they was. Because some things they think that it is matter to them before they leave this earth has made them relocate to where they should not have been. Apostle Paul said, everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. So many people do not ask God, is this still beneficial to me? Can this still help me? Go and ask Solomon, who God blessed with wealth. You know, he did not ask God for wealth, he asked for wisdom. But God said, I will support you with wealth. But after God gave him the wealth, he blamed himself. He almost blamed God, that why do you give me this wealth? Because all what I acquire with this wealth is meaningless. Vanity upon vanity. Because he left the light. The light that God shined upon him that day, when he over 1,000 sacrifice, he left that place. He drifted. He began to associate with strange women. And the strange women, they lead him to darkness. A man who was a God worshiper began to wash idols of his concubine. Do you see what where you can find yourself when you don't remain where God has placed you? In the book of John 15, verse 5, Jesus said, you should abide in me. You should abide in him. He said, even for as the fine cannot bear fruit, or still abide in the fine. And uh, even the tree cannot bear fruit, until he abide in the fine. He said, without me, without him, we will not become anything. You can be a millionaire, but you can be so empty in the realm of the spirit. You may not be anything they don't know you. That is what Jesus said. That many will come to me in that day. They will be denied. Because they have changed their location. Before their name was in a perfect place. Because they dwell in the light. Just because of the loss of the eyes. Pride of life. Yeah, I want you to see the type of mansion I build on the earth, the kind of house I have, the kind of property I acquire, where I put my property. At the end of the day, they regret everything. Wasting of time. Your joy is to eat what is right and be satisfied. Everything you labor for in your time of sojourner on this earth is time is a vanity upon vanity. Even all the money, the people already acknowledge when you die, they take you to where or that way. Those who left before you, they will go and associate you with them. They will separate you with your big mansion, your big car, your jet. So amazing. The thing is, on certain time, I see that those who will be wise will be wise. Those who will remain foolish will remain foolish. There is nothing you will do about it. I know a wise person, when he sees some certain thing that is unusual happen, they learn. They quickly take account of those things. But fully, he say, what matter? It doesn't mean anything. I heard the news today, maybe it's true or not. He said there's a fire break in one building, 10-story building. 
until the Nigerian jump from 10th floor. You know the half feather, like I said before. When you ready half feather to fly, you might find yourself in that pool where nobody will support you. And the end of the day, you regret, why did I jump? If you know the will of God for your life, ah, every day you'll be the most happiest person. When he says sit down, it will please you to sit down. When he says stand up, you will say yes, sir. You will find it as a joyful thing to do. It will not be something so difficult for you. But when you are in the wrong place, huh, even the simple thing, you can't do it. It will so hard. You will be struggling and struggling. And str you know when God says you should love, to love is, is by grace. But when you dwell in the light, to love is very easy. But when you are not there, to love is a hard thing for you. You will not be able to do it. When God, the Bible says forgive, <laughs> and you think you can forgive if you, are, if you are not in the light. Hey, you and your conscience you will battle. And you won't win your conscience. Because your conscience will prove why you must not let go. It will give you all reason and evidence. But when you are in the light, the light will take away every form of darkness and your heart will be light. That is the purpose of the light. The light will give you total relief. It will give you confidence and comfort. This is a certainly world that men enjoy. I want you to enjoy the same thing in our generation. There is no generation without trouble. Everyone pass their own time and go. If anything happens in your own time, don't count it as a trouble. In the book of James chapter 3, from verse 1 and 2, it says, My brethren, when you fall into divers of trial and temptation, he said you should count it all joy. How can you count trial and temptation as a joy when you are not in the light? You will see it as a suffering and pain. But when you are in the light, you won't feel anything. It will be easy as anything for you. Go and ask Paul and Silas, according to the book of Acts chapter 16. When they arrested them because they do good things to that girl, they deliver a girl with the spirit of divination. They arrested them and put them in the prison. They were beaten as well. But the beating cannot stop them celebrating because they are in the light. The beating, can, the beating, the pain, that dungeon cannot stop them and say, Praise the Lord, my soul and spirit. Praise the Lord. When they were praising God, enemy is feeling irritated. When you are praising God, your enemy will be unhappy. Praise the Lord. Go and ask a, a polygamous house. Praise the Lord. <laughs> a way a man has two wives. When there is a misunderstanding between the two wives, when one is singing, the other one will be feeling bad. What is the essence of her singing? Aha, if she's singing about me, I can see. Praise the Lord. The same way the devil feels when you are praising God. And when you are praising God while you are on earth, everyone is happy. They pay attention. Where are they praising God? Where are they calling the name of the Messiah? Where are the people rejoicing because of him? And when they look down and see us, they will come down to fellowship with you. God fellowship with those who stay in the light. If you are inside darkness, don't think God will come down and fellowship with you until you come out. You must come out and identify yourself with the light. Otherwise, you will remain in the darkness. Utter darkness forever for the rest of your life. Praise the living Jesus. This light also has incomparable transformation. It can transform every situation. In the book of Acts chapter 9, Acts 9 verse 3, Bible tells us that light shine around a man called Paul. As the light shine. A man who used to be a murderer, a man who used to be a traitor, 
A man who used to be a persecutor, the light changes heart absolutely. You see, sometimes you cannot be perfect until you come to the perfect light. When that is what the Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 48, Matthew 5, verse 48, he said, Be thou perfect. Even as thy heavenly father is perfect, you cannot perfect until you come to the light. That is where God will teach you and nourish you himself. All what you are hearing here, it will not be meaningful to you until the one who owns the light make light to shine in your heart. Bible said the God of this age are blind the mind of so many people. So that they will not believe the gospel. Let they believe and be delivered and safe. But the light will make you to believe when the light shines upon Paul. Ha. That day, the name he crucified, the name he hates, he begin to love it. Because a transforming light has come upon him. The wicked soul was changed into a, a, a good heart. He became a kind-hearted man. Started doing good, begin to see how, see what God used to do. When you are dwelling in the light, you begin to see the work of God. You begin to see the example of what God used to do. You begin to see the picture of your Heavenly Father. Then you begin to, you know, have His attributes in you. You conform to his attributes. You don't need anybody to begin, you know, to press you, to, to force you, to begin to understand some certain things. But because you are there, you enjoy every necessary thing that will make you to grow spiritually. Everything that people who are there before you enjoy, you also will begin to enjoy the same thing. You begin to see things differently from the way other people see it. In the book of 1 John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. Let me read it from the scripture. Bible says, But the anointing which ye have received of him abided in you, and you need not that any man teach you, but the same anointing teach you all things. And it's true. And he lie, he, he's lie, he lie not, and even as it is, as taught you, ye shall abide in him. So because you dwell in the light, you will be taught. You will have a crucial information. Heaven will not tell you. You will not be feeding on the dance, the earthly thing, feeding on spiritual things. You will have spiritual abilities. You become supernatural man, supernatural being. Anything you do, you will excel. Praise the Lord. Many of us we use the property people acquire to measure our sources. We are making a mistake. Bible says Jesus. He was rich. Though he was rich. Because of me and you, he became poor. So that you might become rich. Who is the richest? Jesus. Are you the one or the one who make you rich? Some of us, we are boasting on what we don't have. What someone gave to us because he loved us, because of his willingness. Now we now become his Lord now. He can't control that what he gave you. Jesus can't control your home, can't control your marriage, can't control your car. He can't control the church. He bless you to take care. You are the one in charge. You take the decision. Even if you did not say, you will say the Lord say. What will you gain at the end? Do you, are you are trying to implicate yourself. Don't say, I say. Don't say the Lord say. It will be so meaningful. People will not blame you so much. One thing that always scared me, when I begin to hear people say, God speak to with me. Just now, in the next two minutes, God speak. I will say, ah, this person and God do every day, they just, 
<laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> we know God is not the talkative. <laughs> he spoke once and two that we have had him. According to Psalm 62 verse 11, he said, Father, I belong to him. Praise the Lord. So, all other thing is that this light guaranteed deliverance. Acts chapter 12 verse 7. Bible says Peter was locked in the dungeon. But the light shine. When the light shine where you are, there is always a visible body. You will have angels of God around you. According to Psalm 91, verse 11 and 12. Psalm 91, verse 11 and 12. He said he will give his angel charge over thee. He will give his angel charge over thee to keep you where in all your way, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Send their hand, they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. If you walk in the light, you will not stumble. And you will not be afraid of darkness or those who do evil work. Many of you are afraid of witches and wizards. You are afraid of them maybe when you abuse them in the day, in the night they should come. They will come and flog you. If witches and wizards are still flogging you in your dream, it means you are still somewhere. Because when they come, the power of God will rise in you. You will become a physical person. From your dream, you will stand as a human being and you begin to deal with the devil. Some of them, when you finish beating them, they may not wake up to life. The people who know you are serving under the higher authority and you are afraid of them. Some, I have a lot of challenges before me now because I'm inspired greatly. If people who eat every day do whatever they like, they can be telling us sit down and we will sit down. And will not say anything. How much more we who can go extra mile and give our our stomach to God for a time? And we cannot do such thing. We can't tell them, shut up your mouth. We truncate what you are saying. I used to there used to be the chancellors of David, but one day he said, God, this I eat over. I regard him, but today help me turn his cancer to foolishness. And the authority stands. This is the way God wanted to operate. When we will say, let's provide this, some of us believe things cannot change in this generation. We, we are, whatever they tell us, we just believe it and follow it like that. We don't, can't change anything by ourselves. We cannot take any issue to God because we know God will not answer us. Because we believe, because we believe that we are not where we can, he can answer us. When you dwell in the light, you will believe that God answers prayer. You will believe. You will be so happy to go to God and report any issue to God. Go and ask the same Daniel. After this thing, Daniel chapter 6, he had a very serious issue. When they say they should only pray to the king, not to king of kings, Daniel opened the window. So that they can see him three times he prayed every day. And people rose up against him, was not terrified. They take him, took him, they drop him in the lion den. He doesn't say anything. Does he die in the mouth of the lion? But God see the mouth of the lion. God is able to seal, seep the mouth of your enemy so that they don't see anything. Praise the Lord. Even anyone say anything is just for testimony. Because after that, you will still come out and thank God that God gave you victory over your adversary. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. This same light harmonizes spiritual gathering. When this light is available, it harmonizes our spiritual gathering. In the book of 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, Bible tells us there that if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship 
with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Period. When we come together, we pray, God intervene. God, overlook our sin. He forgive us instantly because of the unity. Because we come to show our love for one another. Praise the Lord. Lord. For me to round up tonight. When we want to talk about the light, Jesus is the light we're talking about. John 8 verse 12. Jesus said, He is the light of the world. If you go to church any, every day, any time you don't have Jesus, you only pray that Jesus will give you something. But Jesus himself is not in your life. You are wasting your time. Any journey you embark on without Jesus, you end up with frustration. That is why it is very wrong to walk alone. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Many of us today, we are living in fear. Why are you afraid? Jesus has conferred the tribulations of fear. He is the first person to go before us and show us the example. So if we have Jesus, we are the light of the world. In the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16, Matthew 5, 14 to 16, the Lord Jesus said in verse 16, He said, ye are the light of the world. A city that is built on the hill cannot be hidden. Why are we hiding ourselves today? Many of us, we are capitalizing on some people who error a mistake. And you don't serve God with all your heart. Please, if you are in the light, you will leave what belongs to Caesar for Caesar. You will leave what belongs to God to God. You will leave what belongs to the world for the world. And you will serve God faithfully with all your heart. Because there is nothing you will gain in your striving with people here and there. Let God have his way. If you dwell in the light, God will fight for you. You don't need to be fighting. I begin to tell you different testimony. You just begin to look and say, ah, is it possible? Different way I've experienced God intervention in my life. Just because I'm making my first choice. Praise the living Jesus. Most of the time when we are in the at work, we will even be slumbering because of maybe, you know, waking up, body relaxed, but that cannot stop me from still stand up to see, say, Jesus, you are the Lord. We want us to begin to thank God tonight. Because the best place to be is to be in the perfect peace, perfect light, to dwell in the midst of perfect light. That is where we can have problem, we can have trouble. That is where we can stand and shout hallelujah. And the kingdom of the darkness will crumble. And they will frighten before us. I want you to appreciate Jesus. If you are hearing me tonight, all what to do, you go to church. Even your pastor is your idol. You don't see God as God. Holy what to go to church to this to go and look at the miracle. Your pastor performs in the church, that is what you are looking after. You don't look at the, the main miracle worker himself. The one who owns the custody of miracle. You need to change your mind tonight. You need to look up to the one who is able to save you to the end. Pray and say, Father, keep me in your perfect light tonight. Let me begin to dwell in your perfect light. I want to remain there. I don't want darkness to come near me and my family. Anything associated with darkness, I don't want to experience it. Father, tonight, I and my family, I and the children you are giving to me. Father, let us dwell in your perfect light. You dwell in immortality. 
Let your light shine all over around us tonight. Let people begin to see the glory of your light upon our life, upon our destiny. Upon everything we do. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Psalm 20, verse 7 says, Some trust in chariot, some trust in horse. But we remember the name of the Lord. Whenever we remember the name of the Lord, something happens. Our enemies are terrified because one thing enemy wants us to do is to forget the name of our Lord. Bible says, It shall come to pass according to Acts chapter 2, verse 21. He said, Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want you to call that name Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, take me to where you are tonight. Let me begin to dwell with you in the spiritual realm. Let my family begin to do well with you in that realm of the spirit. I am not part of whatever is going in the globe today. I'm not a, a, a part of global agenda. I'm a part of heaven. I am heavenly citizen. I acknowledge where I belong to. I, am, I, I embrace my own country. My heavenly country as my last place to be. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We are going to pray, Father, anything that the power of darkness has stolen from me, stolen from my family, stolen from my destiny, stolen from my marriage, stolen from my ministry. Starting from your church, let your light recover it back to me. Let your light expose all the forces that are behind all those tragedy, those evil events in my life. Everything that has been stolen from me in the previous year, previous months, Father, let it be restored back by the power of your light tonight. Let your life begin to restore back all my losses, all my losses, all my losses, all my losses, all my losses. Let me begin to experience recovery, rapid recovery in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Finally, pray. Say, Father, it doesn't matter how the gross darkness. Cover this, cover this year. Oh Lord, let your light continue to shine on my way. Let me continue to see. Let me see light to walk about. Give me light in all my journey. It doesn't matter how broke darkness I cover the people. Cover this year, cover everything. Let your light shine upon me. Shine upon my family. Shine upon your church. Shine upon my home, my Father, my God. As we have prayed, so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Th thank you, Father. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We love you so much. Because of the love you have for us. We are praying today. Let us grow rapidly. Amen. Give us knowledge Amen. of salvation. Amen. Give us knowledge of deliverance. Amen. Give us the knowledge of your light. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Holy Father, give us major breakthrough Amen. over this world. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Don't let darkness overcome us, O oh Lord. Give us ability to overcome every challenges on our way, on our ministry, in our home, and in our place of work. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. This is time to, to give to God. Let's bring out our offering where we are. God continue to bless.